A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee, and he left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light, and on those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along this there from, and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good afternoon. Father Francis back with you once again on this third Sunday in Ordinary Time. I want to show you something. This, these look awfully strange and peculiar. But these are special walking shoes called Vibram Five of Fingers. These are actually walking shoes and not uh, gloves. But again, you can see why they're called Five Fingers. Now, it's really interesting because uh, I've actually worn these uh, several times. Maybe you've even seen me wearing them around uh, the parish from time to time. Uh, again, they're designed mostly for walking along the beach, but uh, you can walk, walk, actually use them walking in the park. One of the things about learning about health and fitness is that we need to realize that we need vitamin D. We need lots of vitamin D. And the best source of vitamin D is the sun. And Today, we see that theme of light and enlightenment being played out in our gospel. And the wonderful message, I think, today for all of us, and I know that many of us have probably experienced some sort of, say, depression or darkness. Again, even though we are experiencing some wonderful weather, although it is a drought year, uh, beautiful temperatures in the afternoon in the 70s and the beautiful blue skies and light fluffy clouds. The bottom line is that we are still in winter time, at least for another few, for few, few more weeks. Uh, we'll see what Punxsutawney Phil will say pretty soon here on the 2nd of February. But uh, we recognize that if we're going to be healthy, we need to have sunshine. And so usually in the winter months, we don't get as much sunshine, and as a result, we don't get enough vitamin D. And so today, we kind of look at that as a spiritual application to see that we need sunlight. But instead of spelling sun, this time S-U-N, we spell it S, capital S-O-N, sunlight, the light of the sun of God. And that's what we see in this marvelous gospel uh, Jesus has uh, gone to the sea country, the seaside, if you will. And in many ways, these are neglected, almost kind of forgotten, almost even held in a little bit of, um, you know, um, they, they weren't held in high opinion, you know, well, well, these are, these are very humble towns, they're very, they're kind of um, in, insignificant. And yet, isn't this wonderful? This is where Jesus begins the actual uh, calling forth of his disciples and we see him actually going out 
into the world, uh, into the forgotten people, if you will, casting that light uh, to those who are in darkness. Now, sometimes you might think, well, gosh, the seaside, that's, how can that be darkness? Well, there's dark seas, certainly. And, but a lot of times we look at the, the, the seashore as a, as a sunny place, don't we? A place where we go to find uh, a little bit of a respite, a kind of even vacation. A lot of people go to vacations. Well, this time, the, the beautiful Son of God is now enlightening the world. And that uh, as he enlightens people, uh, now he also begins to, in a very intimate way, call certain people to follow him more closely. Um, and so he enlightens their lives. Have you ever had somebody that you know of that really kind of enlightened your life? You know, after you met this person, your life isn't quite the same afterwards. I had one encounter of a person that was just like that who really left a, a very powerful impression on my life. I was uh, at St. Charles, Borromeo, just down the road here from Good Shepherd here in Elk Grove, about 17 years ago. And I remember having uh, the occasion to visit uh, a sick woman, a woman who was dying, or at the time was, was fighting cancer. Her name was Lydia. And I was asked to bring Holy Communion to Lydia. Well, I'd, been, I'd visited many homes with many people who were sick and not doing well. So I had, in my mind's eye, when I got there, Somebody was going to be really sick in bed or even in a hospital bed with maybe, you know, all of the uh, medical accoutrements of uh, maybe a respirator and uh, maybe some other medical devices and beeping and chirping and humming and trying to keep this person alive. So when I got to Lydia's house, uh, I will never, I'll never forget, she was upstairs and she called me and said, oh, I'm up here, Father, come on, come and come upstairs. And again, I expected to find somebody in uh, a bed-ridden kind of situation. And I walked into this room, and this dear woman was sitting at her desk, and she was in a beautiful uh, colored, uh, flower-colored dress. And she turned to me, and with the most radiant smile that I probably have ever seen in my life, uh, this woman greeted me. And, uh, and yes, she was sick, but what I found later was that she was, um, uh, at that time, uh, recovering from cancer. And the thing about Lydia was that her attitude, her gratitude, uh, her life was almost like this bright light I'm looking at uh, here in my little studio. It was that bright and, and that, that intense. And I'll never forget leaving her home that first time, and I visit, visited her many, many times afterwards, but I remember visiting this very energetic, uh, charismatic, and very um, uh, full of life and vitality and light. This lady, I, I can only say that if I would uh, uh, use any words to describe her, she would have had a very uh, enlightening personality. And it just, it just kind of really made a deep impression upon me and many other people who met Lydia. And so today, Jesus casts his light of love uh, and he invites his disciples to come and know him uh, closer. He calls them to repentance because we need uh, to repent. We need to return. We need to turn away from the darkness uh, in order uh, to see the light. And so that's the message today is allow that light of Christ to enlighten you. May Almighty God bless you this day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.